Shalom, dear loving brothers and sisters. We are in the first Sunday of the Advent as we are remembering when Jesus came 2,000 years ago. And also we are remembering what Jesus spoke to us, that He will come again. So as we are remembering the past and are waiting for the future, we are with Jesus Christ, especially in the time of the Advent. Today is the first Sunday. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the foundation of the church, the rock of the church, I invite everyone to this beautiful, wonderful, gracious worship service. Let us stand up as you possible, if you are possible, and have meditation prayer. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 to 2. But there will be no gloom for the, the one who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the later time, he has made glorious the way of the sea and beyond the land of the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. Amen. Okay, let us sing the hymnal together. Nearer my God to Thee. Nearer my God to Thee, nearer to Thee. Even though it be a cross that rated me, still all my song shall be near on my call to thee. Near to thee, nearer to thee, though like the wanderer, the sun gone down, darkness be over me, my Yet in my dreams I be near on my God to thee, near on my God to thee, near to thee. On to heaven, all that thou said at me in mercy give angels to back on me, near oh my call. Nero, my God, to thee, Nero, to thee. Then we 
my walking thoughts, proud with thy praise. Out of my stony griefs, heaven I'll raise. So by my walls to be near all my cot to thee near all my cot to thee near all to thee Amen Let us all pray Dear Heavenly Father, as we are living in this troubled world, we are going to you nearer by day, by night. We are walking with you as you promised, even though we are walking in the, the valley of the shadow of death, we have no fear because, because you are with us. You take care of us, of everything, so we don't have to worry about anything. We thank you for your creating us and your saving us, and you are abiding with us all the time. Especially this time, you allowed us to worship you, to have the time of this joy and delight in remembering of what you said that the, you are my children. Yes, we are your children. We want to honor your name. This time, we remember all the people scattered all over the world. Oh God, please have mercy upon us so that we may come back to the church as we recover the coronavirus and all the enmities and all the divisions among us and we come back to the church again and worship together as we are singing together to you oh holy god father god please be with us and listen to our prayers and this time we want to honor your name the triune god and we want to listen to your word as you are giving us as the daily bread oh god please Lead us to the truth so that we may listen to your voice. We pray all these in Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Why don't you share your shalom to your brother and your sisters and your parents and anyone that you remember that we are one in Christ Jesus. So this shalom is coming from above. Even though we find no shalom, no peace in this world, but God is the creator making us the new hope. So let us share the shalom. And today is the first Advent Sunday. And we have the fourth, which is the Christmas Sunday. So we are waiting for the time when Jesus was born as we remember. But also, we have the hope for the coming of Jesus Christ again. So, we are having this beautiful worship service in the beginning of the winter time. Okay, now this is the time that we have the scripture that God is giving us today. The Mark chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. And as he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be no left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter 
and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all things, things are about to accomplish? And Jesus began to say to them, See, that no one leads to astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And uh, they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must be taken place. But the end is not yet. The nation will rise against nation, and the kingdom against the kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. There are but the beginning of the birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and that you will stand before governors and the kings for my sake, to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death and the father his child, and children will rise again parents, and have them put to death. And that you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, May God bless you, especially in the times of the harvest. Yes, we had the harvest, the Thanksgiving Sunday last Sunday, and Thanksgiving Day last week, the Thursday. And I believe that God has given you enough blessings to your families, so that you may you may have the beautiful times with your family members. Especially the time of the pandemics, we have lost many things, precious things. Especially the relationships, because of the social distance we have to keep. However, we need to know that in the spirit, we are the same. We have no difference, because God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Jesus is the same. Yesterday, He is today also with us, and He will come to us again. So this is what we find, the stability, the sameness, coherence in Christ Jesus. So we give thanks in all circumstances. Amen. Today, it is the first Sunday of the Advent. And as we remember, and also as we, uh, you know, wait for, wait for Jesus coming again, we are now having this scripture. And the scripture that we have today is about the sign and the signs of the end time when Jesus comes again. Jesus taught about this. So it is the good time for us to remember what Jesus spoke. Because this is the end time when Jesus will come again. So we don't know when. However, it is very clear that the time is at hand. Uh, the last 12 sessions in chapters 11 and 12, we have uh, the 12 uh, the kind of disputes or uh, struggles between Jesus and opposing Jewish religious leaders. And they tried to test Jesus so that they may get the clues to kill Jesus. However, Jesus was wiser than them. Because he was the creator God. And they couldn't do anything against Jesus. Instead, Jesus taught them 
What is the righteousness? What is the truth? How the kingdom of God is be given to us and how we get eternal life. So each time, even though he was attacked, instead Jesus, very kindly, with compassion and care, he stood as the teacher to everybody. Today, Jesus is starting in his teaching about the end times. When Jesus was sitting next to the temple of Jerusalem, a disciple came to Jesus and showed the temple and raised a question about the beauty of the temple and the greatness of the temple. Uh, but Jesus said, the time will come soon that the temple will be destroyed totally. And there was a shocking teaching of Jesus Christ. So, other disciples of the inner circle, they came to Jesus privately and asked about when it will be, and also what be the sign of the end time. So, this is the teaching of Jesus Christ about the end time with the temple building and its destruction. Today we find that the end time, it is end time and we have many, many signs. And we find the coronavirus attacking everyone. And uh, also we find uh, the natural disasters covering all the surfaces of the, of the earth. But more clear one is the churches being attacked, persecuted by other people. And also inside of the church, we have many false prophets teaching not good not true teachings. And about the persecutions from outside, we find many places upon the earth, like uh, uh, the North Korea, which is, I think we believe it is most serious. Many people were killed and not many people left as they are worshiping God underground and Chinese churches, and African churches, and many, many churches have been attacked by non-Christians. However, the churches without persecutions outside, they have inner struggles. They lose the spiritual tensions, the gifts they forgave, so that the churches are diminished and the doors are closed. So we find in the United States, many churches are disappearing. The buildings of the churches are transform, uh, transforming to other uh, kinds or demolished. This happens already uh, in Europe countries and also in Korea. And also we find this there are many people who are tempting us, leading us to astray, to the wrong teachings. And uh, the truth has been hidden, has been covered. And uh, the false teachings, uh, you know what, uh, have uh, the bigger, greater voices. And also many people come saying, I am he. I am the Christ. And also many rumors and the news about the wars and the struggles we find, we hear every day. And also many good Christians have been caught to other places like councils and the synagogues. In the name of Jesus Christ, we Christians are 
uh, being uh, persecuted. But thing is clear, the good news is spreading to the all, the all of the nations. This is a most serious, a most significant sign that we find. The good news about Jesus Christ is spreading very rapidly to the ends of the earth. By the internet, all the earth has become like a small village. And by this, we find Christian teachings are very widely spread. Especially today we find, as we focus upon it, the building of the temple and the church. Disciples, especially a disciple, were so much proud of the church, the temple building by that time. So beautiful. Uh, last year, my wife and I visited Israel and Jerusalem, the temple. So beautiful. Yes, even though it is not exactly the same, it was about the kind. And by the time of Jesus, it was Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire had many beautiful buildings. And even compared to other you know what, buildings, Jerusalem building was very beautiful and wonderful and great. So the disciples were very much proud of the Jerusalem. And especially the building that they were proud of was built by Herod the Great, uh, who was a ruler uh, against the people, against God. He had the authority and the power from Rome. Uh, and uh, he also had very uh, uh, ambitions to maintain and to magnify his authority and the power uh, even though he killed his children and his wives. So his building of the temple was to uh, use the power and authority of the temple in his maintenance and in, in his extension of his power. So he was not that religious person at all, but he was political people person. So and also many people who are living by the temple were not that religious at all. Like a Pharisees and a Sadducees and a priest, a high priest and scribes. Jesus spoke against them because they were hypocrites, different from inside out, outside from inside. And they had their own interest, economic and social interest and they used the temple. And Jesus is now telling two disciples how God will deal with the temple, that God will destroy the temple totally, and God will build new temple as he builds new heaven and a new earth. As we all know that Ezekiel, the Old Testament prophet, had a vision of the new temple. In chapters 40 to 48, he had a vision of the temple that was not, had not never been established upon the earth. And there, the new temple, God, who one time left from the temple of the corruption, now God is coming back to the temple of the new one in the vision. So, in the vision of Ezekiel, God's departing from the temple and destruction followed. And Jesus, God's building new temple. And that one, the new one is where God is coming back again. So, destruction is necessary in the teaching, in the prophecy of Ezekiel for God's coming back again. Because the temple of the corruption, of the sinfulness, is not the place where God is residing. Okay. The same thing we find in the prophet 
of Jeremiah, who stood against the temple and spoke to the people who are coming into the temple for the worship services. He said, this is not the temple of God. Three times he said, this is a lie. You shall not believe that because you do not change your heart, your mind, your ways of doing even though you come as the routine to come to worship, but you do the same thing, committing sins against God. So God said, Jesus said, this is the way that God will destroy this temple. And he, God, will build the new heaven and the new earth and new Jerusalem. A disciple came to Jesus. And he said about the temple. He said, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. Yes, the stones were so wonderful and the construction was so great. But Jesus said, Do you see these great buildings? There will be not left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down that means the two stones were not put together as it was, as they were totally destroyed. It was Jesus' teaching. And that happened in AD 70, for example. A Roman army came into Jerusalem and burnt and destroyed the building totally. And also, this one was not a story, history but also will be made in the time of the end, when Jesus will come. All the temples, all the churches, if not standing in the righteousness, in the justice, in the faith, in the truth, they will all be destroyed totally. And the time is very near. Jesus said, the time is at, at hand, and not one stone will be upon the other one. All things will be destroyed totally. This is a shocking and astonishing statement that Jesus gave to his disciples. And when Jesus was sitting to the opposite side of Jerusalem and the Olive Mountain, the disciples came, the Peter, James, and John and Andrew. This time Andrew added, usually it was Peter and James and John, that group in the circle. But this time Andrew added, and they raised the question, tell us, Jesus, when will these things be? And what will be signed when all these things are about to accomplished? And so they asked the two questions. One is when. Number two is what will be the sign for the time when. And Jesus said, number one, see that no one leads you astray. So you need to be very much careful not to be led astray. And Jesus added, many will come in my name and saying, I am he. And they will lead many astray. Many will come say, I am He. Uh, there are many, there are many, you know what, uh, wrong teachers who is, uh, who are saying that I am the Christ, I am the Messiah, Repla replacing Jesus the Christ. For example, many, uh, you know what, heretic, uh, heretics like uh, the Unification Church, and uh, uh, the Mormon, uh, the, uh, the church, and uh, uh, other churches, like uh, Islamic churches. Uh, so those those, not only those, but also many people who pretend to be the righteous one all the time, they, they say, I am he. Uh, when uh, uh, in, in 2008, a newspaper reported in Korea, uh, in what, uh, 
the Christ, the new Christ, there are about 40 new Christ in Korea in 2008. But the more people pretend to be the Christ, not trusting in Jesus again uh, anymore, but trust themselves, their interpretations, and their visions, their imaginations, rather than the Bible written. So this is the big trouble Jesus is mentioning, and Jesus is mentioning this one as the sign. And also Jesus added, and when you hear the, uh, of the words and the rumors of the words, do not be alarmed. This must, be, must take place, but the end is not yet. So the rumors and the news of the words, actually the genocide and the words, the civil wars, or the wars again, uh, uh, against the nations, will think will happen again and again. And this is the sign of the end times. And Jesus added, For nations will rise against nation, and a kingdom against the kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. There are but the beginning of the birth pains. This is birth, beginning of the birth pains. Only beginnings. Things will come. Bigger one things will come again and again. We had the history of, uh, you know what, uh, colonization. Uh, so, but these, day, these days, uh, many, most of countries had the independence in those three major continents, in Asia, in Africa, in South America. But these days, another types of colonization is being made. In Africa, for example, sadly speaking, many Chinese people, not only Chinese, but also many other uh, uh, big countries coming into and they invest. And actually what they had is the money and the, uh, the natural resources they take away from the continent. And the African people are still live, remain as poor people. In the poverty. So this is another way of, you know what, the de disaster happening at the end of the times. And also when Jesus said, many different words, especially between the nations, we Korea had this war in the Korea War, 1950 to 1954. 1953. These wars, this this war was between the nations, between uh, between the brothers and sisters. In a sense, a genocide we find in many other countries as well. In Africa, 1994, in uh, in uh, Rwanda, we had this one, killing about one million people in. 100 days. And also we still find this in Congo and many other countries. And Jesus said, but be on your guard for they will deliver you over to councils and that you will be beaten in synagogues and you will stand before governors and the kings for my sake to bear witness before them. Now the councils and the synagogues will be the place where you will be persecuted. Look at this. The synagogues is the place where they come and read the Bible and teach the Bible. However, in the place, they interpret according to their interest. They do not trust in God of the Holy Spirit. They reject what Jesus taught the Son of God taught them, who said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. But they didn't trust that. Instead, they have their own interpretation, and they kill the Christians by the name of Jesus Christ. 
For example, as you know, Paul, when he was called Saul, he was the persecutor of the church. In the name of God, with the zeal of the believing in God, he looked for Christians to kill. But when he met Jesus, the truth, the way and the life, he became the Christian, especially for the Jews and the later to the Gentiles. So this time we find not only persecutions from outside, like uh, uh, all the religions and non-Christians and secular powers, like in China now, in North Korea now, but also the persecutions will come into within the church, like the synagogues here, Jesus mentioned, in the council. So we find this, many heretics come within the church, wrong teachings, leading people astray. Uh, recently, uh, sadly speaking, I had a, a kind of uh, uh, a, a video uh, a lesson watching uh, some minutes in Korea who graduate, graduated very good excellent schools who spoke that the Bible was written by human beings. So like a myth and the history, uh, it is not that clear if not proved by the fact. And he said the Bible has many not fact in what non fact, not actual things mentioned, so that we need to interpret. So uh, what Bible teaches, he said, is not historical. But thing is, there are many people who trust in those wrong teachings. And also, we find that Christians will stand to the kings and the governors, like uh, uh, North Korea and China, and many countries in Africa. They feel the churches be their opponents because Christians are not following their wrong teachings because they have God. They have the Lord Jesus Christ. They have the Bible, the truth. So they will lay down their lives for the truth. So for the governors, the corruption and uh, you know, dictators, the church and the Christians are their enemies, they think. But actually, as you all know that, Christians are not fighting against the earthly matters. We have the kingdom of God. Our citizenship belongs to the kingdom of God. As Jesus said, my kingdom is not here, but there in the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, and the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. This is the mission Jesus is now speaking to his disciples. You go to the ends of the earth and that you should pre uh, proclaim the good news to all the nations. And when you do that, Jesus said, they will bring you uh, uh, to uh, uh, the rulers and uh, in, the in the place of the trials. But do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given to you in that hour. So Jesus said, yes, it is clear as a sign of the end of times you will be delivered to the governors and the kings. And uh, you are supposed to speak out, but don't worry about what to say. Because by the time, Holy Spirit will make you speak out. Jesus said, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. This means that do not worry about the time when you be delivered, but be prepared as you be possessed by the Holy Spirit all the time so that the, you are full of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will give you the right words to, to speak out.
today uh, many people are uh, standing against the church uh, in the name of the humanity. Uh, but actually, it is the church who is defending the humanity because God said, you take care of the orphans and the widows and the sojourners. And you take care of your brothers and sisters who are suffering from the deaths. You make the debt easement, paying the debt for your brothers to make the shalom. So it is the church and it is the Christians who have worked for the humanity. But the people, secular people, do not understand that. So this time, we really want to speak defending the church and the Christianity. But Jesus said, it is not the way we make you know, a debate with them, but deliver the good news, proclaim the good news with the signs of the faith. And it is Paul who instead took the cross directly to the people instead of the reasonings, wisdom uh, speakings. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 12, 23 to 24 Paul said, But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So when we were called to the kings and the governors in the persecution time, we don't have to worry about what to speak out, out of the reasoning, out of the wisdom. But the cross, the crucified Jesus Christ, we directly deliver that because we have the power and the wisdom in God as we present the cross and Jesus Christ, the crucified. And the Holy Spirit will work not our word, wordings, our wisdoms, reasonings. And Jesus added the signs that the things happen inside of the family. Brother will deliver bro brother over to death. And the father, his child, and children be raised, will rise again parents and help them put to death. We find this already. Many families have been broken. Inside of the families, we, fight, we find these fightings. And this is especially happens when one of the family members have the truth finding Jesus Christ, living as Jesus commanded. Then other people, brothers or even parents, they hate of one family members being true in following Jesus Christ. So this happens not only outside of the family, but even inside of the family. Christians will be persecuted. Christians will be persecuted everywhere we go. So this is what Jesus is saying. You need to be prepared. So Jesus added, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. You will be hated by all all people, including your family members. So Jesus is saying, come on, this is what you need to prepare. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. You need to endure to the end and you will be saved. Yes, all people will hate Christians. And uh, uh, we find that in Korea and uh, even in the United States, uh, they evaluate religious peoples like uh, Buddhists and the Confucius and uh, uh, Islam's, Islam, and they uh, and they said uh, the Christianity, uh, the Protestant Church people, uh, of the lowest level. That means uh, 
we churches, we the people, Christian people are responsible for their low evaluation because of the corruption, because of the many uh, wrongdoings among Christian people. This may happen to us. But on the other hand, as Jesus said, the worldly the worldview and the values are standing against Christian values at all. They do not understand the church. They do not understand Christians' way of living. That's why it is very natural that they do not value us as we are. We all need to find that, that we have the Bible. We have the Bible that reforms the church and Christians. In the light of the Bible, in the light of the teaching of Jesus Christ, we need, we need to renew it again and again so that we need to be the light and the salt. Even though the world will not appreciate our saltness and the lightness, however, still we need to be the light and the salt and the share the light and share the saltness to the people. And Jesus said, if we endure to the end, and then we will be saved. Remember what? In the Luke chapter 21, verses 17 to 19, Jesus said, You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish, but your endurance will gain, you will gain your lives. By your endurance, you will gain your lives, Jesus said. Not a hair of your head will perish, Jesus said. Even though they attack you, but you will be okay, you will be saved because I am protecting you. Remember what? The three friends of Daniel, Shazrak, Mezak, and Abednego, they were put into the fire, furnace. However, there they were praised the Lord. Not a hair of their bodies were burnt. Because Jesus was there with them. They were praising the Lord even inside of the fire, the furnace. Things will happen. Our salvation will not be damaged by any persecutions, brothers and sisters. Know this, even though the time is this, you know, trouble. However, we are okay. Jesus will take care. Brothers and sisters, many people are still looking at the buildings of the churches. And not only Catholic churches, like having uh, the beautiful, wonderful, even one block or two block big, big size of churches. Last year, when I visited uh, Rome, there we had, uh, you know, at the, the St. Peter's Cathedral huge church building and also even protestant churches they had beautiful church buildings and they were proud of the buildings but church is not the building but it is god it is jesus christ who is the head of the church if not god there if no jesus is standing there sitting there then how we can call that a church it is matter of the time be destroyed by God's hands. We have found many signs by the light of Jesus Christ, by the light of the teaching of Jesus Christ we read in the Bible. And we don't have to have any fear about this because it is already pro you know what, stated by Jesus and the time is for the Jesus to come again at hand. So don't worry about anything. My brother says this, stand in Jesus and with Jesus by Jesus and wait for the salvation to come. Remember what? There are not many people waiting for Jesus. Like the day 2000 years ago when Jesus Christ came as a baby born to the family of Joseph and Maria. How many people waited for Jesus and come and honored, worshipped? Only some people from the east and some shepherds from the field. 
And also, how many people appreciated Jesus' teaching, healing, and uh, uh, feeding, and uh, forgiving the sins? Only few people. Those who were, uh, you know, outcasts, the widows, and the prostitutes, and the sinners, and tax collectors, the poor people, they followed Jesus, right? So same thing will happen even today as we are waiting for coming Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, still we have Jesus. Everything is not making us surprising because it is already stated by Jesus. Don't be proud of the buildings. The building, these world buildings will be destroyed. But the thing is, we need to wait for Jesus Christ. We need to be holy because God is commanding us, you should be holy because I am holy. To be holy is to be separated to God, to think about God all the time, to read the Bible, and to obey the words of God all the time, and uh, wait for Jesus coming again. And this is the way that we are enduring the persecutions, as Jesus said. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your loving us and your giving us this precious teaching. We thank you for your speaking, Jesus, to us, directly to us. Not to be possessed by the buildings, the human projects, but your plan that Jesus will come again to save us. Even though we have been persecuted, we, even though we are standing in the trials, we shall not, we will not have any fear because of you said, because you said that you will be with us. We thank you for your leading us to this beautiful understanding. Oh God, please be with us and lead us to the truth every day, especially, especially the time of these troubles we find, we see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this is the time that uh, we offer the offerings, returning back to God. And uh, why don't you uh, stand up if you are able in the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your loving us and giving this time for the offering. Yes, everything is yours. You are the creator. But uh, you are pleased when we make the, this offering. And this is what you already gave us. So now we are returning to you, back to you. And also as we are standing, we want to offer ourselves to you, our time and our thoughts and our ways of living, everything we want to dedicate to you. Leaving nothing behind us. Oh God, please bless ourselves and our children. Let all look for the blessings coming from above. We pray, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, as we are standing, let us sing the hymnal 340. calls us of the tumult all our love's wild restless sea day by day his sweet voice soundeth saying questions follow me Jesus calls us from the of the vain world's golden store From each idol that would keep us Saying Christians love me more In our 
chosen in our sorrows, days of toil and our service, still he calls in cares and pleasures, Christian love me more than this, Jesus calls us by thy mercies, Savior may we hear thy call, give our hearts to thine obedience, serve and love the best of all. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.